Oh God, nice fish guys. <laughs> Look how fat he is. This chatterbait just smoked a beauty. Can you feel it? Shake and bake, baby. You know, in the last 20, 30 years in the world of bass fishing, there have been so many innovations. New technology, new lines, new techniques, even new lures. But with all that, there have only been a handful of lures that I would consider true game changers. With thousands of lures to choose from, the competition is intense. That bait better darn near perform miracles for me to call it a game changer. And to me, this bait absolutely lives up to that standard. One of the most versatile baits. It's definitely making some noise out there and it's been proving itself since day one. We're talking about the one and only Chatterbait, today on Captain's Corner. That's right, Chatterbaits. Ever since they were first introduced, Chatterbaits have been top tournament winning lures. You'd be awfully hard pressed to find any pro that doesn't always have one tied on, no matter where they're fishing. It is one of the most versatile baits that can be fished in many different ways in many different situations. And probably the greatest aspect of a Chatterbait, anyone can fish it. It doesn't matter what your skill level is or how much knowledge or experience you have, anybody can fish a Chatterbait and find success. So today, I'm gonna go over a chatterbait. What makes a chatterbait so versatile and so successful? And whether you're a beginner or an experienced pro, I'm gonna give you my tips and tricks on how I fish chatterbaits and how you can help build confidence in chatterbaits yourself. So let's do it. Let's break it down. Everything you need to know about fishing a chatterbait. Why? There we go. First pass, guys, we're on. Here we go, woohoo, he's a lively one. He's a lively one. Hey, he's a nice, healthy bass. He's not huge. Not huge, but he's nice. And he just inhaled. He absolutely destroyed that chatterbait. All right. Yeah. Look at that. Five minutes in, we're on our first bass already. Let's go get another one. What is a chatterbait? Chatterbait is actually a brand name of a specific type of bladed jig. It's a jig with a skirt on it and attached to the front is some sort of a blade. There are hundreds of manufacturers and many different styles of bladed jigs out there, most commonly known as chatterbaits. But no matter what manufacturer or what they call it, it's a jig with a blade attached to the front of it. That little blade vibrates like crazy, side to side, creating a ton of vibration and moving a lot of water. It is proven to be a big time dinner bell for big bass all across this country. You can fish them fast, you can fish them slow, you can fish them in cover, open water across the bottom, and even blazing fast across the top. They are a fantastic bait fish imitator. They're also a great crawfish imitator. There are so many ways to effectively fish a chatterbait. You're gonna be hard pressed to find a situation where you can't fish a chatterbait which is what makes it a true game changer in the world of bass fishing. When's the best time to fish a chatterbait? Anytime you got one tied on. Oh, there we go. We got another big bass. Nice bass, dude. Yeah. Dude, I'm barely hooked right on the bottom lip. That's a nice bass, buddy. <laughs> Son! <laughs> look at that. Fat. Look how fat that pig is. It's like a small mouth. Look how small his head is compared to his belly and tail. Woo! <laughs> there it is. On the chatterbait. Check that out, guys. What a pig. What a beautiful fish. Gorgeous. Let's let this beautiful girl go. Awesome. 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 There she goes. <laughs> Ted, I got a bunch of chatterbaits, so I'll borrow one. 
Now, as I said, there are many different ways to fish a chatterbait. It's such a versatile lure that you can fish it just about anywhere you want, slow moving or fast moving, top or bottom, there's gonna be a great way to fish a chatterbait for whatever those fish are wanting today. I'm gonna to go over my top three ways to fish a chatterbait that covers most of the spectrum for me and generally will find me a good bite no matter where those bass are. Number one, keep it simple. Cast and retrieve, it's as easy as that. Simply cast it out towards structure, towards cover, or even in the open water, let it sink and do a nice steady retrieve. The blade's gonna vibrate, the bait's gonna quiver, and your trailer's gonna provide a little extra action too. This bait will provide all the action that you need by just doing that. Bass hunt in several different ways, but for the most part, they're an ambush predator. They rely on certain senses to catch their prey. Sight, smell, and their lateral line. Their lateral line is where they feel vibrations and movements in the water, and a chatterbait calls them out. And when it comes past the point where they're sitting waiting to ambush prey, it looks like the prey they want. They're gonna feel it, they're gonna know it's coming, and they're more than likely gonna come out and eat it. Your rod position on this method is pretty important though. You're gonna wanna keep your rod tip down and away. It forces the line against the guides. It's going to transfer the vibration from that bait down your line, which will transfer it through the blank of the rod to your hand on the reel. So you can actually feel your bait vibrating the entire time. It's also gonna put you in a great position for a perfect hook set. A lot of chatterbait bites can be very soft as that fish is chasing the bait down from behind. So feeling the vibration is very important. If it suddenly stops and you don't feel it anymore, drive home that hook, because it could very well be a fish that just grabbed it from behind. Fish, good fish, good fish. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh, nice bass. Oh yeah, he's a tank. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> On the chatterbait. Yeah, baby, there's a beauty. <laughs> Woo, yeah. On the chatterbait, baby. <laughs> yes, look at that. Another one of my, my favorite transition lures. The chatterbait got me a beautiful, beautiful bass here. What a beauty. He was right up in that grass. I just got it right on the edge and he smashed it. Awesome, awesome. Let's let that go. About a three pounder, nice. My number two method to fishing a chatterbait, burn baby, burn. The biggest asset to a chatterbait is the vibration of that blade. So why not maximize it? The faster you move the bait, the faster the blade vibrates, and the more the bass are gonna feel it. That dinner bell will ring loud to the bass in their lateral line. Burning a chatterbait works especially well over submerged grasses and alongside of other cover, like lily pads, grasses, dock, and even laydowns. That vibration is going to call the bass out from wherever they're hiding. That quick vibrating blade is moving a ton of water and absolutely lighting up their lateral line. They feel it coming and any bass in that grass or in that cover is going to hear the call. It'll draw them out and force them to react, creating dynamite reaction strikes. So when you're around submerged grasses, other heavy cover, even alongside the docks, burning chatterbaits absolutely maximizes the action that a chatterbait is best known for. And you may even call out the wariest of fish by burning them real quick. Let's see if the old chatterbait can do something. There is some submerged eelgrass out here. Yes. <laughs> Man, it, it was weird. It was just like solid all of a sudden. He's decent. He's decent. Yeah, he is. <laughs> the chatterbait. Man, he didn't hit it. I didn't say it was just all of a sudden. There was like, I thought it was like dragging a ton of weeds. He wasn't fighting at all. Boom. Ha. That's a staging. That's definitely a staging bass right there. There it is, chatterbait. Woo! Chunky, chunky. Pre spawn bass. Love it. Chatterbait was the way, huh? Out here, too. My next favorite way to fish a chatterbait the finesse way to fish a chatterbait slow and low. 
I'm going to literally drag it across the bottom just fast enough to get that blade moving side to side. Dragging it across the bottom, knocking off any structure that's down there. This is imitating bait fish feeding off the bottom. It also greatly imitates a crawfish scooting across the bottom. I'm dragging it with my rod. One big sweep, reel up the slack. Just literally dragging it fast enough across the bottom, knocking off any rocks or structure that's down there, but keeping that blade moving side to side, creating the vibration, letting the bass know where that bait is. Drag it with the rod, reel up the slack. The only reeling I'm doing is reeling up the slack with this method. Every several drags, give it a great big quick pop, a quick jerk up that's gonna make that bait bounce off the bottom, vibrate real quickly, and then flutter back down to the bottom, drag it again. Jerk it up, let it drop, and drag it again. That little extra jerk every so often creates a quick burst of vibration and will get any of the weary bass that are kind of looking at it to react without even knowing it. They either get out of the way or they eat it. And most of the time, they're going to eat it. There we go. We're on. Oh, God. Nice fish, guys. Big fish. Big fish. Another beauty. This is a good fish. Oh, man. Good fish. Oh, oh don't lose this one. Oh, yeah. Oh, another tank. Another tank. Get him in the, get him in the boat. <laughs> yeah! Yeah, buddy! <laughs> this chatterbait just smoked a huge fatty. A big fatty. Look at this monster. <laughs> Look how fat he is. <gasps> he is so fat. Oh, my gosh. Guys, this is a tank. This is a, a beast. Oh, yeah! Look at, oh my god, look, check this out. He just finished eating something decent size, and he just hammered my chatterbait. That's why he's so fat, buddy. Look how fat he is. Wow, what a fish. What a fish. Oh, man. Oh, this chatterbait just smoked a beauty. Absolute beauty. He is so fat because that's a, that's a fish. That's the rest of that fish in his mouth is in that belly still. Wow. What a gorgeous fish. Going to be uh, about four, four and a half pounds. Wow. Beauty. Go back and finish your food. Woo. We find a pattern with this chatterbait. Now, there are a multitude of trailers that you can put on chatterbaits. That's, again, another thing that makes them so versatile. Because of the action of the chatterbait itself, nearly any soft plastic you choose to put on as a trailer is going to get a little extra action. So you don't need to choose your trailers based on the action they have themselves. I try to match up my trailers to how I'm fishing the chatterbait at the moment. If I'm doing a steady retrieve and covering a lot of water, I'm mostly using the chatterbait to imitate fish or bait fish. So with that, I choose trailers that best imitate bait fish. A three or four inch boot tail or paddle tail swim bait best imitates a shad or smaller body bait fish, in my opinion. They give a good, steady action and enhance the overall appearance greatly. If I'm burning a chatterbait, I also go with fish imitating soft plastics for my trailers, but I always select ones that don't have as much action as a boot tail or a paddle tail swim bait. Moving that chatterbait along that quickly creates a lot of vibration, and it's gonna add a bunch of action to the trailer anyway. In fact, when you're moving chatterbaits really quickly, any trailer that creates too much action on its own is gonna create a lot of extra resistance and drag in the water, which is gonna force it to go up to the surface a lot quicker and overall impede the action you're trying to get. So I like to go with fish imitating soft plastic trailers that don't have a lot of action on their own. Something like a fluke or even trailers like this Gamagatsu, allowing it to move nice and quick, have lots of action and still keep it down in a good strike zone. When I'm slow rolling or dragging a chatterbait, I'll typically go with more of a craw imitating style trailer. Something with two appendages that doesn't require much speed to create action. Something like a speed craw or a twin curly tail grub. Now when I'm slow rolling, but I know they're actually feeding on 
bait fish or preferring bait fish, I got a great trick for that. I'll take my typical flipping baits, like a beaver style bait, rather than rigging it on the hook flat ways, I'll rig it sideways. As it goes through the water, that big beaver tail is gonna be flapping, much like the tail of a fish. It makes a great imitation of panfish, like bluegill or other bream. Now, as far as colors, it's no different than most any other baits out there. I try to stick with the lighter colors like white and white and chartreuse when I'm in the clearer water situations or heavily pressured lakes. And the darker the water, the darker baits I go. I also try to keep in mind what forage is in that lake. If they feed heavily on bluegill in that lake, bluegill imitating style baits. But typically I'll go white or white and chartreuse for the most part, and then I'll do the more natural colors in darker water. If you don't wanna buy a bunch of them, make sure you got some white ones and make sure you got some black and blue or even green pumpkin ones. You'll cover just about every aspect. To me, the color isn't as important as the action of the chatterbait. And of course, when it comes to the gear, Casking does make a very fantastic rod just for chatterbaits, designed by the pros for what they believe is best. The Speed Demon Pro chatterbait rod, it's seven foot three, medium action, moderate fast tip. It's got a good strong backbone because chatterbaits have a strong hook. It has a very sensitive tip. Feeling that vibration is key, especially on those soft strikes. I personally really enjoy working my chatterbaits fast and I wanna be able to move them fast when I can. So I use a fast reel, something in the seven to one, eight to one, even nine to one, so I can move it fast when I really want to. And if I have to slow it down, I can just slow down myself, but I can't make a slow reel go fast. So stick with a faster reel. And as far as line, nothing has more sensitivity than braid. So I love to throw braid. Anywhere from a 30, 40, even 50 pound braid, if I'm gonna be fishing around cover, it has very little stretch, it has incredible sensitivity. I can feel everything that that chatterbait is doing. If I'm in a situation where it's ultra clear water or really heavily pressured lakes, I'll put on a fluorocarbon leader. But my main line is almost always braid when I'm fishing chatterbait. You need good power in your rod, you need great sensitivity in the tip, and you need great sensitivity and strength in the line. Boom, there it is guys. Everything I know about chatterbaits. Fish it fast, fish it slow, fish it on the bottom or fish it on the top. Make it look like a bait fish or make it look like a craw. No matter how you boil it down, chatterbaits ring the dinner bell and bass will hear the call and they're gonna come out and eat. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you learned a little something. If you did, make sure you smash the heck out of that like button and leave a comment on anything else you'd like to see us film. We'll do our best to make a video out of each and every one of those. But most importantly, subscribe to the channel and stay subscribed because there's plenty more coming in Sawgrass Bassin's future. I'm Captain Mikey signing out. The future is bright. You keep those lines tight.